Robert Montgomery, uh, in my dealings with him, uh, he was a, had been a very successful movie star. He was a very handsome man, very erudite, and very reserved. By the time I got on the show, it had been on for three years, he never came to the show. He would show up for the dress rehearsal. At, uh, the show was on at 9.30 at night on Mondays. He would come at 7.30 for the dress rehearsal, 7.30 to 8.30. Then you'd have to go back to his dressing room, and he'd give you a few notes, most of which you couldn't do anything with because you were on in 45 minutes. And the actors had to have an hour, a half hour under the union rules. You couldn't mess with them. They had to be left alone for the half hour before the show. So you had 15, 20 minutes with the actors. So he was very reserved, uh, very unapproachable, uh, and uh, quite cold, I thought, in, in my dealings with him. But they were very short-lived. I mean, there would be 15, 20 minutes a week. So it's only his name being used? Yeah, it was the most wonderful experience of my career. I had these shows that I was literally the producer of. Any director was who worked on it, but you were the producer, you worked with the writer, you cast them, you never had anybody bother you. There was nobody from the agency, nobody from the network. You were on your own for an hour. It was some learning experience. You tried everything, you did everything, and. Uh, it was the best part of my, if you asked me to choose the best part of my career, and it would take me one minute to tell you the two or three years when I was directing live dramas in New York. But Montgomery also, he, uh, he had uh, a character flaw in that when, when he did show up, I directed Jimmy Cagney, the famous movie star, in the only live drama he ever did. It was on Robert Montgomery Presents. It was called Soldier from the War Returning. And Montgomery showed up at the first reading. I nearly fainted because Montgomery and Cagney were buddies. That's how he got him. So he showed up at the first reading, and I thought, oh, I'm going to be in trouble this week because he's going to be here every minute to tell me what to do. No, he didn't show up again till the dress rehearsal. And then after the dress rehearsal, he had, he had it one note. He didn't like the way I was shooting. There was a section of a boxcar. Now, you don't have the whole boxcar in a live television show. You just have a little, enough of it. To, and you, it's just built to be shot a certain way. And the casket, a casket of a, of a dead war veteran from the Korean War was being moved out of this boxcar. And it could only be shot from a certain angle. And he didn't like the angle. He wanted the camera to move to the left so you would see this shot in profile of the of the casket coming out of the boxcar. Well, if you move the camera around here, this way it's okay. This way it's okay. If you move the camera around here, you're going to be shooting off into the living room because the boxcar is only that long. So I told him that. He says, well, turn out the lights in the living room. It'll be black and nobody will notice. I said, I was just horrified, but he wouldn't change. So we, we went on the air that way, and of course what happened on the air, I told the... Uh, camera guy to turn out the lights uh, before we got to this. It was a new cue he put on his list and the guy on the switchboard didn't get the cue. So when the time came, the camera's over here where Montgomery wants it and the lights are on in the living room. So you see a casket coming out of a boxcar with the living room right in the background. I mean, it was terrible. And so, But nobody seemed to notice it. It was, it was okay.